A so-called p-chart is a control chart for tracking the proportion of something when the proportion of anything is a concern of yours. This particular problem, the proportion is the proportion defective, ironically, but nonetheless the issue is the percent or proportion. An office supply company manufactures paper clips and even tolerates a small proportion of these paper clips as being defective, incorrectly shaped or twisted in its outgoing product. The company reasons that paper clips are so cheap users will simply discard the occasional defective paper clip they might find in the box. This is actually not uncommon in high volume, extremely, extremely cheap items, but anyway. The average proportion of defective paper clips is known to be 2%. Ooh, that is a reading we are going to need. The average proportion is known to be 2%. That is more formally P bar, average proportion. 2% is, in decimal places, 0.2. All right, now, when the manufacturing clip, paper clip manufacturing process is in control. To monitor this issue, what sh Ooh, oh, here's the question. What should be the value of the upper control limit of a P chart? If the company plans to include 100 paper clips in each sample and uses a Z value of 3.0 to construct that chart. Ah, we just need a formula. The upper control limit of a so-called P chart is that P bar right there plus the appointed Z value times the standard deviation in the sample pr proportions. Now, wait, the Z, I just, we looked, oh, there it is. Yeah, actually we're just, we're given that. Great, we have that already. Z equals 3.0. So the 0.02 goes here, the 3.0 goes here. We. We just need this, and it didn't say anything in here about standard deviations. Oh, this is one of those situations where to fill out one formula, you need another formula. You know, sometimes that happens. Okay, to fill out this formula, we need the other formula for the standard deviation and the sampling proportions. Um, let's see, that is a big square root over P bar times one minus P bar, that number that we discovered first, divided by lowercase n. Lowercase n is always the size of the sample. Oh, all right, well P bar we had, we don't have this, we don't have this, but actually I can see it. It is in the problem because it says they plan to include 100 clips in each of the samples. That's perfect, that's the size of the sample. Now we have everything that we need, but we have to fill this out first. Okay, so this equals 0.02, there's that, times one minus 0 0.02, or 0.98, divided by the 100. Okay, so I get that's the square root of 0 0.0196 in the numerator divided by 100, or, that this standard deviation in the uh, sample proportions is 0.014. All right, now that was needed to go here. Now we have everything that we need to go back up to the top and calculate the actual thing that was asked for, which is the upper control limit. Okay, so the upper control limit in this case is 0.02, right, P bar, plus three, that's what we were given, times that number we just found, standard deviation in the sample proportions. So I get that that adds up to 0.062, or stating it more intuitively as a percent, 6.2%. So if you were drawing a p-chart for this paperclip company, what the p-chart would show is although an average of 2% of these paper clips is defective. When you're drawing samples of 100, you're willing to tolerate up to 6.2% being defective in one of those samples, and it's not gonna alarm you because that's gonna fall inside the chart. Anything more than that, and you go, whoa, this is too many defective, stop, something's wrong. Now, the, the problem is answered at this point because it only asked for the upper control limit.
Okay, so if that's all that you're interested in is just how do you get the answer to this problem. Okay, we're done here. Um, if you want a little bit more practice, we could calculate the lower control limit. It didn't ask for that, but it's, this is kind of like a bonus round, right? Because the lower control limit, if you were drawing a chart, you're going to need both. The lower control limit is just that same average proportion minus Z times the standard deviation in the sample proportions. Okay, so you'd say 0.02 minus 3 times 0.014. Now if you put that in your calculator, what you're going to see is a negative 0.022. Okay, that, if somebody asks you, well, what should the lower control limit be? Oops, don't report that. Now that is what should result from the formula. But there's no such thing as a negative proportion. So with p-charts in general, it's not just this paperclip company. With p-charts in general, when you're calculating the lower control limit, if that number comes back as negative, just reset it to zero. So the lower control limit of this particular chart would be at zero.